Hello everyone, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Maddie. I run EdTech Classroom, the blog, podcast, and of course, YouTube channel. Today is Vlogmas Day 12. Now, if you aren't familiar with Vlogmas, it's something that a bunch of YouTubers do where we post a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So like I said, today is Vlogmas Day 12, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to create an assignment or attendance tracker in Google Sheets. So without further ado, let's get started. So I just went to sheets.google.com and I opened up a blank presentation. So you'll see we have this untitled spreadsheet up here in the top left hand corner and I'm going to go ahead and give this a name and I'm going to call it assignment slash attendance tracker. The sheet that I'm going to be creating today, you can use as, as an assignment or an attendance tracker. I will have this template linked for you guys in the video description down below in case you want to grab your own copy. But of course, I'm gonna show you how to create your own. So personally, I like to put the name of students in this A column because it's helpful for me to stay organized. And I think a lot of teachers probably agree that keeping the student name on the A column makes it easy for you to be able to keep track of which student has submitted which assignment or which student has been absent. So what I like to do is I like to start off in this A2 cell here and I would type in students names. Now, if you have a class list, you can just paste these into this column here. I'm going to go ahead and just type out a few names manually. I'm only going to share five student names. Now, of course, you probably have way more than five students in your class. So you would want to maybe paste a list of students or you can type them out manually as I'm going to do now. So I'll just say student A, student B, student C, student D, and student E. Again, you're going to have way more students in your class most likely, but this is just hopefully to give you an example. So like I said, I like to have my student name in the left-hand column here. And then in the columns B and on, that's where I like to either have the date or the assignment name. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that this is an assignment tracker, but basically what you would do is instead of putting the assignment name, you would instead put the date up on that top row. So let's take a look at an example. For this B1 cell, I'm going to go ahead and type in assignment number one. You can be more specific here. Let's say you have a specific assignment name that you want to title this. You do have the ability to do that. Just for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say assignment one, two, three, etc. So now for this C cell here, I'm going to go ahead and type in assignment number two, then assignment number three, and assignment number four, assignment number five. All right, so now I've added five different assignments here up on the top on the top row. So my row one, again, it contains all of the assignment names or the date if you're using an attendance tracker. And then the A column is going to have all of my students' names. Now, personally, I like to just track whether or not a student has submitted their work. You do have the ability to type in numbers if you are using this to grade student work. But personally, I like to just use check boxes to be able to catch uh, to keep track of which student has submitted which assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to add check boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of the cells that I want to contain check boxes. So I am going to, I clicked on this one cell here and I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click on this cell here to create this rectangle. So now that I'm going, now that I've created this rectangle, I can go ahead and add my check boxes. So I'll go up here to where it says insert and I'm going to go down here to where it says checkbox and when I click you'll now see that checkboxes have been added. So this is a really quick way to add checkboxes to your Google Sheet so that you can be able to keep track of attendance or you can keep track of assignments. So of course if you want you could be done here that was really quick and easy but I want to make mine look a little bit nicer. I want to add some colors make it easier for me to keep track. So I'm going to show you guys how you can customize your Google Sheet now. So the first thing that I personally like to change is the font. I know that many teachers really love their fonts and this Arial font is not my favorite. So I'm gonna play around with some other font choices that I think might be more fun for this assignment attendance tracker. So to change the font of the entire file, you can actually highlight every single cell by clicking on this gray rectangle right here. So when I click on it, you'll see that now the entire Google Sheet has been highlighted. 
So now I can go up here to the font option and I can choose a font that I like. You'll see that I have these recent fonts that I have often used before. I'm going to scroll down and see if there are any others that I might like to use for this. And I think I'm going to choose this railway font. This is a font that I tend to gravitate towards and I think it'll help keep things organized, but it's still a really clean font. So it's going to be easy for me to read and see what's going on. So I'll click on railway. And now the next thing I personally like to do is I like to make the font a little bit bigger. Maybe you have better eyesight than me, but this is pretty difficult for me to see. So I'm going to go up here to the font size and I'm just going to make this size 14. And now it's a little bit bigger and easier for me to see. Now you'll notice that when I made that change here, I actually made it so that these um, these uh, texts here are hidden uh, behind the cells. So you actually do have a couple of different ways that you can play with this. Uh, one way that you can, you can mess around with this is you can actually change the cell size by clicking and dragging, and you can manually change each of these cells. Now the problem with that is you can't necessarily guarantee that you're going to make all of the cells the exact same size. So that's sort of a downsize of manually resizing like that. I'll show you what it looks like over here. So if I click on I and I click and drag, you'll see that this, this cell is now much bigger, but J and K are still the same size. So what I am going to show you how to do now is how you can do something called text wraparound. So I'm going to highlight this entire column by clicking right here. And now I'm going to go up here to this text wrapping option and I will click the wrap around button and you will see that now my text has wrapped around. Now the problem with this is that now assignment is broken up onto two different lines, the word assignment. So now I'm going to show you how you can actually make all of the cells bigger but have them be the same size. So I'm going to highlight cell B by clicking right here up at the top where it says B and then I'm going to go all the way over here to where it says M and I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and I'm going to click and now B through M has been highlighted. So again, I held down shift on my keyboard before I clicked on M. Now, when you hover your mouse over M, you will see that this drop down menu appears. If I click on it, I can then go down here to where it says resize columns B through M. And now I can change the pixel width. So if I change this to be double, let's say 200, now my columns are much bigger. Now this might be too big for you. You can play around with the sizing on your own, but this is something that I personally like. Now another thing I like is I like to have all of my text center aligned. So I'm going to go back here and highlight all the text in this in this sheet again and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change to make this center aligned. So now you'll see we have everything center aligned here and I think it looks a lot better. Now lastly the thing I want to show you guys is how to change the colors of this sheet. Now there's a couple different ways that you can do this. If you want to color code things by assignment, you do have the ability to do that. I personally like to just have alternating colors. That's especially something that you would probably like if you are using this to create an attendance tracker. So I am going to highlight all the cells one more time and I'm going to go up here to format and then I will go to alternating colors. And when I click on alternating colors, now there are some different options that I can choose from. I personally like this blue choice here. So when I click on it and I press done, you will now see that I have alternating colors in my attendance slash assignment tracker here. Now we're going to take a look at what this would actually look like if you are creating a attendance tracker. So now you'll see that I've done the same thing for this attendance tracker, except now instead of the assignment name, I have the date up at the top. So you'll see I have 12-1, 12-2, 12-3, 12-4, 12-5. The way you can continue to add more dates is you can actually highlight all of these cells and then just click on this blue rectangle and drag across and now you'll see that it has added daily assignments. Now the problem with using this shortcut is that maybe you don't have daily assignments and then also it doesn't account for things like weekends or holidays. But if you did have an assignment every single day for some reason, including the weekends, that's how you could add daily assignments. Just a little shortcut for you guys. But of course you can also change this manually. So instead I could say, you know, 1217. If you didn't have an assignment until 1217, maybe you would say 1230. Obviously these don't dates don't make too much sense because of the holidays, but hopefully you get the idea. Now the last thing that I want to show you guys is actually how you would use this. So if you are taking student attendance or if you are checking to see if a student has submitted their assignments, you can actually check these check boxes. So the way they work is you can actually press the check and the checkbox and these checks appear. 
So it's really nice and easy for you to keep track of student attendance and you can see, oh, it looks like student D had pretty poor attendance in the beginning, but has started attending, attending class regularly, for example. So just a really helpful handy trick for you to create these different checkboxes and use them in your classroom with your students. So like I said at the beginning of today's video, I will have this linked in the episode description down below in case you guys want to grab your own copy. I'm going to fill out this file a little bit more so that there's more student names and more dates for you guys to use and choose from. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about how to create an assignment or attendance tracker in Google Sheets. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I post weekly tech tutorials for teachers. And during Vlogmas, I'm posting a new video every single day in December up until Christmas. So I'll see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.